Peter Parker and the Parker family, plus J. Jonah Jameson, gather together for a joint birthday party for the Parker children. Little does Peter know that the Kingpin is gathering the ultimate Sinister Six to deal with Earth 6160's growing superhero problem. It's all right here in our review of Ultimate Spider-Man number 8 from Marvel Comics. See you in 3. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Ultimate Spider-Man number 8. You know, when you're setting up a long-form story, there's a right way and a wrong way to plan for the future. If you set up a future event, in this case, like the Maker's Return, the right way is to tell a story that builds the world and momentum, that's the key word, momentum, towards that event. Think of a freight train that picks up speed as it moves. The wrong way is to set a future date and tread water until you can get close enough for the quote-unquote real story to start. Ultimate Spider-Man number 8 seemingly supports the idea that Jonathan Hickman is telling the story the wrong way. Before we dig into the issue, let's recap what happened to Peter Parker in Ultimate Spider-Man number 7. Otto Octavius put Peter and Harry through a series of tests to upgrade their technologically advanced suits, leading to the activation of AI helpers that could wind up doing more harm than good, particularly for Harry. Meanwhile, Captain Britain and Kingpin make plans to address the growing superhero problem in the Maker's absence. The issue ended with Tony Stark, aka Iron Lad, returning to check on Peter's progress. So that brings us up to speed with Ultimate Spider-Man number 8. Peter and MJ are getting ready to take the kids to their birthday party at the local arcade slash pizzeria slash fun place type of establishment. Think of a Chuck E. Cheese, if you will. Richard and May share their birthday party since they were both born in the same month. Before MJ leaves with the kids and Peter goes to get the cake at the bakery, Peter's Picotech suit, which sits in a sphere shape on a nearby table, speaks to Peter to wish the kids a happy birthday. Peter is unsettled that the suit can speak out loud, so he makes a note to sort of chat with the suit later to understand the full extent of its capabilities. Jonathan Hitman comes out of the gate with a story that's a leisurely stroll by comparison by planting a seed with that discomforts Peter with not so new information. We know the AI can talk, we saw it in the previous issue, but the fact that it can talk out loud when he's not wearing it isn't the unsettling moment Hickman is trying to make it out to be. Perhaps he's setting up some kind of black suit symbiote venom scenario, maybe. That could be also the case with Harry and his suit when it talks in his father's voice, but here it seems like it's trying to make a big deal out of seemingly nothing. The issue flashes back to three weeks ago at the moment when Iron Lad appeared through a portal to check in on Peter. That basically is the very last page of the previous issue. Iron Lad explains that Peter is special because he was at the top of the Maker's list of heroes that must not come to pass. A bit of news that makes Peter understandably nervous because Spider-Man is one of those heroes that could be a linchpin in some kind of resistance against the Maker's plans. Conversely, Harry learns that he wasn't on the list at all and that information may cause hard feelings of resentment between the two in the future. This scene works in the moment to provide a little bit of potential conflict or drama between Peter and Harry and also give them a greater sense of the Maker and his stranglehold on the universe that he created. That said, the scene kind of turns out to be a nothing burger for readers because Peter isn't learning anything we didn't already know. He's catching up, but we are pretty much in the same spot where we were before the issue started. The issue returns back to now when we find Peter meeting Uncle Ben and Jay Jonah at the bakery where they exchange... I would say endearing comments about each other. The scene leads to the expected moment when Ben and J. Jonah offer Peter a job to come work for them on their new newspaper venture. Peter doesn't say yes, but he doesn't say no either. Later, the party goes off without a hitch and we see J. Jonah sharing an uncharacteristically sweet moment of care and support for Richard during the party when he gives him a special gift. In this previous scene, we get some world building and nice character moments, but the impact of these developments don't amount to much. Bringing Peter over to work for Ben and Jay Jonah, which he doesn't say yes to yet, but at least that little plan or that little subplot has started, is completely unsurprising because it just brings him in line with Earth 6 when six is Peter Parker. Plus, the moments between Jay Jonah and Richard Parker are sweet, sure, and they kind of give you a sense of the, the connection or the bond that they have, but does it really mean anything? No, in the context of the greater story, it, it kind of doesn't. It's just a nice moment to have, but it's just there. The issue concludes with Kingpin gathering the lieutenants from New York City's four remaining boroughs and the underground underneath those boroughs to form the ultimate Sinister Six, starting with the Kingpin, but now including Negative Man, the Black Cat, Senior, Mysterio, Craven, and the Mole Man. 
Overall, the story builds a little to the world without telling you much more than you already knew. Uh, you get an introduction to the ultimate version of a team that's a different version of the Sinister Six, which is fine. And then it presents a birthday party with sweet moments, but that's about it. If the goal, as Hickman has stated it, is to prepare the world for the Maker's return, he's doing it with as little urgency and energy as possible. If you're spending full cover price on these issues and you're planning to wait it out until the Maker's return, I hope you've got some patience built up because you're going to need it. Let's take a look at the positives and the negatives, starting with what's great about this issue. What do we like about Ultimate Spider-Man number eight? Jonathan Hickman's issue works when he focuses on the small personal interactions between characters. Ben and J. Jonah privately telling other people that the other is lonely is super charming. I'm just going to put it out that it, it certainly works. J. Jonah's gift giving moment with Richard Parker is surprisingly heartwarming. And the teases generated by Peter's talk with his suit in one scene and Iron Lad in another generate, I would say, at least a material amount of intrigue. These aren't big wow moments, but they at least get your curiosity up. Okay, so what is not great about Old Ultimate Spider-Man number eight? Jonathan Hickman is wasting a lot of time either delivering sweet moments that are, frankly, immaterial to the grand scheme of things or telling you things that you already knew. If not for the introduction of the Ultimate Sinister Six in this issue, it would be entirely pointless. To keep this in perspective, the only notable things that have happened in this run are Peter's turn into Spider-Man, Harry's turn into the Green Goblin, and the introduction of the Ultimate Sinister Six. If you've been paying full cover price for each issue, that means you spent $41 US to get to three plot points that are significant. I hope your wallet and patience are up for this because again, it's gonna be a very slow and expensive year waiting for the maker to show up. Final thoughts, what do we think about Ultimate Spider-Man number eight? Marks the next in an increasingly disappointing series as Peter Parker spends the day at a birthday party while the Kingpin makes plans. That's pretty much sums up the entire issue. If the goal was to get Earth 6160's heroes ready for the Maker's return, Jonathan Hickman is taking the slowest, least urgent road possible to get there. At $5 per issue, Marvel can't afford to continue to waste the reader's time and money on a premium series that's just treading water. Therefore, Ultimate Spider-Man number 8 earns a disappointing 5.5 out of 10. I don't know what plan Jonathan Hickman had in mind, but it sure involves a lot of fluff, a lot of treading water, and all around just a lot of waste. But what do you think? Is this the best Ultimate title out right now? Give us a thumbs up if you think it is, and leave us a comment below if you have an alternate opinion about how you think Hickman is handling this series. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.